easy mind, easy life. So, moving on from the previous video where I got triggered by my dad. And I had to go to work that morning. So I sent him the last message, I think would have been around nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, he sent me nine o'clock in the morning was the last message I received from him. And anyway, so I was trying to deal with why this had come up again because I thought I've done so much work on this, on healing my relationship with my mom and with what happened after my sister was born. But I thought, why am I triggered this morning? Why am I upset by my dad telling me I can't go in January, right? And it was the second, because as I sent him the message, I listened to it again afterwards. I have this habit now of when I send a message to anyone, I record it, I send it. I listen to it a few times afterwards. And I really listen to the words that I use and I really listen to the tone. And as I'm listening, things come up, messages come up for me. You know, like little bells, woohoo, listen to this, listen to that. That's what you're, you know, uh, that's what you're focusing on or that's what you're looking at or, you know. But what I kept hearing in that message was second, 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 second best, second, second. And I really had a chip on my shoulder about being second, even though I was first born, right? As soon as my sister came, I felt completely discarded, like not wanted anymore. And I felt second always, and sometimes not even second, invisible you know, a lot of the time, to my mother, you know, just to the one parent. I never had an issue with my dad. Um, but as I'm listening to the message and I kept hearing second and second and I'm second and I'm second best and I'm second. And I sat with that, you know, I really sat with it. And then I had to go to work and I'm in the car and I'm having this conversation with my guidance team, with my angels. And I called them in. I'm like, right, we're having a meeting <laughs> in my car while I'm driving to work. <laughs> I said, help me out. What is it that I am missing here? Right? What, what is it that I'm not seeing or I'm not understanding of why I've got triggered? You know, why I'm upset about this this morning? What does it matter? You know, uh, that they don't want me there. Look, I could understand that they didn't want me there because they don't want to be in the middle of the conflict, whatever she's dealing with, my sister, uh, whatever she's trying to, well, not resolve because she's not looking at it. You know, she hasn't responded to any of the messages I've sent her over the years. But I could understand them. You know, it wasn't about that. It wasn't about them not wanting to have us both there at the same time because they just don't want the drama anymore. They don't want the chaos. You know, they just want to be at peace. You know, they're in their 80s and they're done with all that. And I'm done with all that, you know, I just, <laughs> I'm done, right? Um, but being my sister, over the years, I've sent her all these messages and I've apologized, trying to help her, let go of it, because I know what anger does to you, right? I know how it destroys you inside, right? That, that, um, yeah, that you, you can't let go. You're the victim of that person. That person victimized you, you know, like... <laughs> They hurt you, they deliberately did whatever is in your mind that this person did, right? And uh, and as you relive that, every time you hear their name, you see their face, you relive that pain because you haven't healed it, you haven't let it go. You haven't realized that it had nothing to do with you in the first place. <laughs> okay, so I'm driving my car to work. And I've called in the angels and I've said to them, please help me resolve this. What is it that I'm not seeing? What is it that I'm not understanding? And they're sitting around me and I'm not mm, receiving anything, like any messages. So I thought, okay. As I look up ahead, it was one of those days that are overcast. And we've had so few of them this year. But that, year was, that day, it was overcast. And I look up ahead at the road ahead. And there's this beautiful, huge dark cloud. And through the dark cloud, the beams of sunlight poking through, you know? And in the past, every time I've seen that, these beautiful beams of light shining through clouds, and the sun is behind all the clouds. You can't see the sun at all, but you can see the beams poking through, whichever way they poke out. Usually they poke down, I see. And 
I always think, oh, I used to think God's talking to someone. You know, he's, he's got a message for someone. He's talking to someone. He's touching someone's heart. It was what I always used to think. And it wasn't until recently, it was this year, that I saw one. I saw one of those moments with those beautiful clouds and the sun peeking through with these beautiful beams. And I looked at it and I thought, hang on a minute. If I'm noticing it, it's because God is talking to me, not someone else. But I'm noticing it. That message is for me. And th that morning when I was angry about the message my dad sent, I was upset more than angry, I think. I wasn't angry, I was upset. And um, I looked at those clouds and I saw the beams, you know, shining through, poking through. And I thought to myself, oh, God has a message for me. And in that moment, you know, all the angels around me smiled. And I looked up and I said, okay, so, you know, what message do you have for me? I am listening. I'm listening, I said to God. And then I got, I could hear clearly, I love you. I have always loved you. And I have been with you from the first moment you came here. And in that moment, I just, I felt like my heart had been filled, you know, with this beautiful love. And I felt supported, you know, and I just felt whole in that moment, like, oh, you know, nothing else mattered. It was just perfect. The message I received was perfect for that moment. And in that moment, with that love filled in my heart, you know, my heart filled with that love of the divine, I looked at my situation again and I thought, hang on a minute. I realized that in that moment that my sister was born, yes, inadvertently my mother had cast me aside. It wasn't deliberately, it just happened that way because she was so busy with this new baby. And she didn't include me in any of the activities of the baby, which again was an experience I was meant to have because there are so many parents that do. You know, the siblings can hold their brothers and sisters, the newborn babies, and they can help feed them and they can help change them. And I wasn't allowed to do any of that. She was completely treated like a separate thing that I was not allowed to interact with, right? So I thought, okay, you know. <laughs> but in that moment, and this is what I wanted to share, in that moment that my mother cast me aside, or that was my perception of it, that's the story I created around that event, I did the same to my five-year-old. I did that to my little one. You know, in that moment that I, my heart was filled with that divine love, I looked at my five-year-old and I thought, how could I ever leave you there, you know? She was so beautiful. She had the most beautiful heart. And I looked at her and she was, she used to think, I mean, I still do, but from very little, from the youngest age that I can remember, there were no bad people. Everyone was good. And those that behaved in a way that wasn't kind and loving and gentle and generous and all those wonderful things, I already knew that it was because of the pain inside them. They were hurting. I already knew that from quite young. They were hurting. And that's why they couldn't be good people. And I just looked at that beautiful child and I thought, oh, how could I ever have left you here? You know? And I embraced her in my mind. I gave her a huge hug. And I told her how much I loved her. And I promised her that she would always be first in my life, always. She was so playful and so funny and so goofy, you know, all the beautiful things that she was, innocent. And I promised her that from now on we would walk hand in hand. I would never, ever, ever leave her there again to be second to anything, you know, um, because I'm the one that left her there feeling second feeling as I was driving in the car with the angels I was saying to my little one what is it that you need to say why are we upset again about this you know I thought we resolved this I thought we healed it and yet here we are you know and nothing was coming up but in that moment that my heart was filled with that divine love and I'm looking at my beautiful inner child that 
beautiful little girl and I'm giving her a hug and she's smiling up at me like that's all I wanted I just wanted to be first for you not for anyone else I wanted to know that I matter to you not to anyone else and you know our little one all they want to know is that we love them more than anything else we love them for who they are for the beautiful love that they brought into the world when they were born whether that was acknowledged or not it doesn't matter you know your little one your child your five-year-old it just came to be the love in the world to be this beautiful love to remind others of the love that they are how can you not be in love with that you know and whatever it's been through after that when grown-ups treat our little ones a certain way we tend to leave them there we don't want to look at how painful it is to feel all that so we leave them there rather than acknowledge that all they ever wanted was our love not anyone else's our acceptance not your mum's not your dad's but yours they want you to know how special they are how special they were what a beautiful gift they were to this world you were a gift to the world you still are a gift to the world but so many of us walk around with our little ones hurting inside you know not loved not accepted not appreciated for the beautiful gift they were so today i'd like you to sit with that sit with your little one and ask is there anything you want to tell me today is there anything I can do for you today? And then really listen. You know, in the next video, we're going to talk more on this because they're going a bit long today. But um, I love you, my darlings. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.